What's going on, everybody? Sorry I haven't made a video in a very long time. Get your dick off my back, dude. That's fucking... I felt that. That's sick. Damn right, dude. I got choked. Uh, uh, uh. Anyways, guys. Sorry for that tiny little interruption. <laughs> yeah, I haven't made a video in a very long time. Uh, apologize for that. We've ran through... I guess we encountered a few setbacks, and that's pretty much how this entire build has been, just a bunch of setbacks. So, in reality guys, we actually started working on the harness, we got it dropped in the car, and I've put in about 16 hours into that damn thing now. And that's really what took the longest. So, what ended up happening was, I first built the harness before, I guess everything was like in the engine bay, and I guess looking back at it now, it's like now I have that experience. So if I were to do things differently, I'd probably do this shit first and then get the harness done. So um, long story short, harness was extremely long and I had to go through it again and shorten it. I'm talking like this much shorter. So this thing was an absolute mess, consolidated a lot of the wiring. We had a few issues here and there. Um, I guess with a starter not kicking on, uh, figured that out. So I think you guys are gonna like today's video. So today we're actually going to do a recap on the fuel pump. Reason for that is for some reason it was not kicking on. Now I know what that reason is. But since it's out, I've decided to go over the entire system, how I got it to fit in the stock fuel carrier or fuel assembly. And I know that a lot of you guys have been asking how I did it. I've been getting messages. It's actually one of the, again, one of the most viewed videos that we've had. And uh, it, it is kind of tricky to set this whole thing up because you don't have a lot of clearance in there. You know, the, the opening for the fuel tank is like the exact diameter of the carrier. So long story short, this is a great opportunity. I'm going to cover it in detail and I hope you guys get a, I guess, added value from the, from this uh, video. So um, I guess got Justin over here, right there. He isn't feeling too good. Dying. He doesn't have COVID, but um, probably allergies. Yeah. He decided to go swimming in what Warm. cold weather. Yeah. So, um, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So, again, guys, this is uh. The stock assembly pretty much uh, with a few things added at the top. I do want to start off with this plug. So we actually had the return place right here. Um, had some issues with clearance with this this part in particular. So this is actually what creates the Venturi effect in the, the stock fuel system. So again for the Venturi effect you have kind of like a saddle style fuel tank. So the Venturi effect without power pretty much sucks the fuel from this side, goes over the saddle and puts the fuel where your fuel pump is so uh, so it doesn't starve and um, you technically don't need this but uh, which is why you end up plugging this and uh, so you eliminate that venturi effect and now that is going to take place in our radium fitting so I'll go over this here in a second um, again going back to the top so we ended up ditching the stock uh, connector um, just because I needed a way to connect the fuel pump and I have a 12 volt wire a thicker gauge wire running directly to these uh, positive and negative terminals and that's exactly where these are gonna go so here's the top side you can unscrew these off and then you connect yep positive positive negative to negative and then you're ready to go so uh, the next thing, too, that I want to cover, uh, this is, I guess, the stock housing for the fuel pump. So we ended up taking this out. You don't need any of this, and um, there's still some fuel in that. And what I ended up doing is I used the outer ring that came with it or that holds that in place, and that's where I placed this, our Hellcat fuel pump. So this is, um, I don't remember if it's a 485 or 450 and it's now TI Automotive, where it was a Walbro fuel pump, uh, but I think it was just kind of like a branding thing. So if you guys look at the placement, um, it's still stock original placement. The reason why I got rid of this housing was because the O-rings, they wouldn't seal this, 
this barb up properly and it was a little sketchy so I didn't want to mess with that and um, now I, I'm gonna have a hose going directly to it and I'm gonna worm clamp it down should be ready to go so this is how I set it up made an aluminum bracket it's very snug with some sort of radiator hose on here uh, I guess just to help with the overall vibrations and so it doesn't slip out it's extremely tight on there so that's not going anywhere and I riveted to this uh, nylon bracket so once that's all set to go you can drop it right in snaps in place doesn't I mean that's not going anywhere and um, that's pretty much it for the fuel pump so if we work our way in a little bit this is the part that took quite a bit of trial and error for clearance issues uh, so we have this this is again our fuel return line so we couldn't really utilize this because there's no way to run a line in that area and I guess secure it down. Um, I feel like if we were to do something with the original Venturi system, there's gonna be a lot of, uh, I guess, restrictions and overall hose diameter, uh, little barb opening. So I did not want to mess with that. So I kept that in place. So I ordered a 90 degree barb and this is what it looks like. So again, you got a return, goes through the top hat, comes all the way down, and then into the canister and out. So once it travels out of the canister, then you're gonna have this Venturi effect. And this is pretty much imitating the stock system at this point. So if you look, you're gonna have the return coming, you're gonna have the flow going in this direction, and it's gonna siphon the fuel from the right-hand side of the fuel tank. It's gonna siphon it over the saddle Again, with no power, there's no fuel pump on the right-hand side, and it's gonna spit it out into the left uh, side of the, of the tank. So then at that point, you're always gonna have constant fuel on the left-hand side, and you're not gonna run out of fuel at really half tank of gas, because that's where your other half is gonna sit. So that's the overall concept of this, and um, here I just put like a, a rubber vacuum cap um, over this. Pretty sure these are fuel resistant. I remember we looked it up, and. I think those should be safe. I'm gonna double check that. I think so. Um, if not, then we'll just jam a bolt through there or something, should be ready to go. So, I think, I don't know, what do you think, Justin? Am I missing something? I feel like no, it's that's very, pretty much it. Yeah. So, um, at this point, assembly, what this looks like is, I'm gonna get my barb in place, a 90 degree fitting, and all of, uh, our hoses and fittings are, I think, I don't want to give the wrong measurements here, but I believe they're 3 8 That sounds right. And you're eliminating pretty much any restrictions at that point. Um, everything is a, I guess, I don't know if it was a true uh, 3 8 because I think the outer diameter of this is 3 8 not the inner diameter. Um, but specs wise, when you're ordering all that stuff, that's what we ordered, 3 8 fittings for everything. So got that fuel or that 90 degree barb in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place in or drop in my fuel pump. And it goes like this way. Like that. And this is the tricky part. So uh, you can somewhat mold these lines with a little bit of heat and uh, you can get them to clear. So we're gonna wrap this line around the back side of the return. And I'm not even gonna wire these for now. These are, uh, make sense, I guess. And you don't need clearance for those. You can pretty much tuck them however you want. Um, gonna get this in place. You could do this outside, or I guess when the top hat isn't ready to kind of drop in in their corresponding uh, ports. And now, just align the top hat and you'll see how this line kind of tucks into that bracket I don't know is that picking that up Justin is that yeah I'm gonna rotate all this stuff around because it kind of gets messy and then the original feed tucks into this corner there's like a gap for that and after that that's it so I've actually measured with a welding rod the depth of the fuel tank and how much this needs to compress and we have plenty of clearance now. Before it was extremely tight. So we had the Venturi 
fitting running around this left hand side on the outer perimeter of, of the housing. Eliminated that, put the port right here, and now we have plenty of clearance. So um, I've actually dropped this in the fuel tank and it fits. It's nice and um, I would say everything is secure. I feel very confident about this setup. So that's pretty much the overall rundown. For the last piece, this is gonna go there. And the original um, fuel line that's in the car that pulls the fuel from the right-hand side will snap onto this, and that's it. But yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. One thing that I do wanna do that I find beneficial in other videos is I'm gonna give you guys kind of like a 360 view of this entire housing. And so this is this we didn't really mess with, so that kind of clips in there. I'm actually gonna park that here. I'm gonna move that out of the way so it's easier to see. So this is all stock, didn't mess with any of this. Plug this little uh, barber nipple on it. Um, coming around, nothing in this area. And again, we're gonna take this off. And this is kind of like how the fuel lines look when the top hat is off. Again, it's going in, tucking in place. There it is, all tucked. So for the fun part, guys, I do wanna give you a quick update again. Uh, I think there's some things that drastically changed in the engine bay, and that's where we'll start. Uh, as you can see, oh, dude, they haven't seen this whole front end right now. Um, yeah, I think they have. Have they? With yeah. the fan and stuff? Yeah. I'm pretty, oh, no, maybe not. Not with the bumper on. Yeah, so we got the bumper. We ran into a few issues that we didn't think about. So when we first mounted the radiator, we're like, oh, yeah, we have plenty of clearance. But then we forgot that we had the condenser. We're going to have AC. And we also have the transmission cooler, uh, this fan right here, which is extremely girthy. So we do have clearance there. We didn't have to cut anything, and that looks absolutely killer. We we're gonna put a mesh over it, but we're just gonna leave that. We think it looks awesome. Also, the intercoolers, those are nice and centered now, nice and even, and they're actually very solid. So same thing goes for this side, extremely solid looking. Now for the engine bay, looks a little nasty. Huh? It, it's good, trust me. So all of these uh, computers are plugged in. We're, we haven't mounted them just yet. Um, we need to find a spot for them around the battery area. Um, these wires actually go down for the transmission, so this won't be there. And this is also going to go down. This is, I think, for our O2 sensor. And uh, for the most part, everything was like cut to length in terms of wires, so I went through the entire loom Everything is gonna be nice and tucked, and it's going to look awesome. So aside from that, our intercooler piping, I added a few nipples for, I guess, our, our fuel regulator. And then um, I did add our, uh, our boost sensor right down here, connects to the intercooler piping on the left-hand side of the car, and sensors. So got our fuel filter, sensor, sensor, we got a sensor in transmission. We got a sensor, where else? We have to do the we have AFR still. Oh yeah, we still gotta do it. AFR is connected. We just obviously don't have an exhaust yet, uh, which is the biggest challenge at this point. Everything else, uh, obviously wrapped headers, spark plug, boots, all of that stuff is nice and secured. Nothing is really making contact at this point. Everything looks extremely tight, but there's clearance there. I mean, these are probably the only things that coolant lines that are making contact, but nothing that will melt right in that area. Everything that is, I guess, regarding to the headers has pretty solid clearance. And uh, all of our fuel lines are shielded too. So hoping that everything will be safe. And I do wanna show you guys, I wanna show you guys this interior, guys. It looks, Awesome. All right, guys, take a look at the interior. So we got this thing put back together. Looks absolutely stock. And yes, we got power in here. So Justin, you got the key? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, so we have power and everything seems to kick on. We do have our 12 volt sources going to fuel pump and everything ignites nicely. We haven't turned on the car yet. I do want to show you guys a few things. So we have our uh, little uh, fuses here for our gauges. And... I don't think they've seen the gauges either. No, they haven't, dude. Unless they fall. This is if they fall one Instagram, of the yeah. sickest things ever. Take a look at this thing, guys. All right, go ahead and turn them on. 
look at this. That's how low. Oh, there we go. So you got transmission temperature, fuel. On this side, we got our oil pressure, boost, and AFR. But this setup is absolutely nice. It looks stock. I mean, you can't really even tell that they're there. Before, we were going to go with kind of like a pillar. And, I mean, yes, that looks cool and all, but we were kind of wanting for that stock look. Everything around the shifter looks nice and stock. We really didn't cut anything, any mm -hmm. plastics or anything. Yeah. So, I guess I would go ahead and turn it off now, Justin. I do want to show them the surrounding area that you 3D printed. So, there's, uh, I guess, the face shield for the, the LCD screens. And those came out very, very nice. So that was 3D printed, courtesy of Justin. Your boy. Yep. Um, that pretty much concludes the interior. And still got a mess in the back, but we'll get that fuel pump in place, hopefully today. Yeah, hopefully. All right, guys. We might be jumping the gun here a little bit, but I do want to take, I, I guess, a shot of this. So look at that, that fitment, guys. So we got a nice girthy wheel back here. I think these are 305s. How wide are the the wheels? Uh, 10 and a half or 11s, I can't remember. I thought they were 11s. They might be 11s. So, 11 inches wide. Put your hand next to that, Justin. Yeah, pretty damn big. And fits nice with a body. Take a look at these wheels. We don't, we didn't want to reveal them, but man, this looks insane. Take a look at that. <laughs> that looks so crazy, dude. That's so meaty, too. These I things are enormous. Yeah, very, very big wheels. Got a lot of meat on them. Definitely gonna break some axles. So that's a problem that we'll deal with later. So yeah, guys, that's, uh, I guess, a quick update on the car. Um, I think today what we'll do now that I covered the fuel assembly I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in now that you guys got a good chance to look at how I set this whole thing up and If I have issues, I'll let you guys know so you don't do this. I did say that it didn't work the first time, but There's a reason for that. So I found out and I actually found out through reading um, on FRS forums that the stock the original uh, line the power source for the fuel pump is is like a green I think it's like a dark green wire that line actually supplies 5 volts when the key is in the on position and uh, I guess to correct that I ended up running a 12 volt line that now is constant when the key is in the on position and that triggers our relay so before we couldn't hear it clicking now it definitely works and uh, I also tested the fuel pump just to make sure it wasn't malfunctioning. So at this point, there is really no reason why this shouldn't work. So I used a, uh, what is it called, voltmeter and uh, tested all of that stuff. Good to go. I was getting 12 volts from the starter. So we got the starter and we have a fuel pump. At this point, the, I, I think, I, fingers crossed, I really hope these coil packs work because these are actually the ones that we got with the engine when we bought it. Yep. God knows how old these are. So hopefully we'll have spark. After that, we should be good to go. Good stuff, guys. We'll catch you guys hopefully. Next know, week, dude, hopefully. Next week. Well, honestly, That'd be dude, ideal. <laughs> I was thinking about cranking it tonight, but I'm a little scared. I don't want to jump the gun. I kind of uh, want to go everything over everything real quick. And, I see. We can uh, shoot for it tomorrow. I've been down. Hopefully I feel better. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. So, who knows, guys? I I don't want to say it because I've said it before, but this is this is getting really close. We got to test for leaks tonight, yep. and yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, maybe we'll film it. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't follow us on Instagram anymore because we just suck at posting. I posted but, last week. <laughs> yeah, last week. But just kidding, guys. Please follow us, and we'll catch you guys later.